and welcome to Herstory. Today on the show, we have Mary Sherman Morgan, better known to none as America's first female rocket scientist. Say hello, Mary. Well, ladies and ladies, her mouth moves, so I'll take that as a hello. You are an unlikely candidate for America's first female rocket scientist. You didn't even begin school until eight years old because your parents didn't even want you to go. It took social services intervening for you to even be able to learn. Excuse me, I was valedictorian of my high school class. What? Valedictorian. And now who's a rocket scientist? <laughs> Now what was valedictorian? Well, you don't have to yell. I wasn't yelling. But you never even graduated college. World War II was happening during this time. There were a lot of opportunities opening up for women, so I thought it would be smarter to leave college a little bit early with some science education and get a job as a chemist at the Plum Brook Ordnance Works in Ohio. After the war concluded, you set sail to California where... Um, I don't think I sailed from Ohio. California. I believe you just made a, a, a wise crack, but I still am having difficulties hearing you. So let me continue. You went to California after the war, where you were employed by North American Aviation as one of its only female engineers. We're talking 900 engineers at this place. You were one of the lone ladies. You were tapped. Miss Mary Sherman Morgan by the U.S. government. These were the days of the Cold War, and ooh, it was so cold outside. This isn't a global warming reference for kids watching now. The Cold War did not have anything to do with global warming. Rather, it was about how Russians were rude. And the government said, mm, we need to catch up in the space race because Russia's put some spots fix up into space. And I think Sputnik, by the way, is Russian for old polar bears. The U.S. needed to get a rocket off the ground. And guess who stepped in here? Old Silent Sally in the corner. You, lady rocket scientist, got Explorer 1, America's very first rocket, into orbit thanks to the rocket fuel that you developed called Hydeen. About half of that is correct. Fun story. I wanted to call Hydeen bagel. You wanted to call Hydeen what? Bagel. A harmonica. Eating a bagel. Two-handed toothbrush. Bagel. Ham and cheese sandwich. It's actually this joke that I made because Hydeen combined with liquid <laughs> oxygen, which we called locks. I thought, perfect name. Bagel locks. Like uh -huh. a bagel and <laughs> Like a bagel and Like a bagel and locks. <laughs> Quite funny. <laughs> I think. I really enjoy food fun. My question is, why no one up until very recently even recognized you as America's first female rocket scientist. No one even really knew that you developed hiding. Two reasons. It was the Cold War and I was sworn to secrecy and I didn't want to die. I just really didn't want to talk about it. So you're just kind of a low profile gal. Not to mention that lead engineer Werner von Braun was a bit of a publicity hog. Soon after hiding, people figured out some more efficient types of rocket fuel that were then used in successive space programs. Literally, your career peaked into orbit in the sky, and then came right down because uh, you left. You were tired to become a mother. You know what's harder than being a rocket scientist in the 1950s? Being a female rocket scientist who also has two kids. Your son discovered at your funeral that, oh, guess what? Mommy was a rocket scientist. The LA Times, that stands for Los Angeles, would not even print an obituary your son submitted to them because they could not verify that you really existed. I just hope that with this appearance on Herstory, more people will know of your name, more importantly than your name of your brain. And more importantly than your brain and your name, the fact that people I have not been understanding her the whole time, she's a very quiet talker. Signing off, Chipperoo and to the stars.